Viveur, le nouveau parfum pour un par Norton et Wilson. Parce que la vie est faite pour être appréciée. Hello everyone, welcome back again. So, it's time for another episode of my most cherished fragrances, where I find out the five most cherished fragrances of a special guest. We've had some wonderful guests so far, and here's another one that I've had several requests for, and it's AC from the channel Smells Good. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I have to say that, mate. Sorry. <laughs> Everyone's got to have a catchphrase, and I love you know, it's, just, it's a simple one word catchphrase, but instantly we know it's you. So it's great to have you on the channel, AC. Thanks for having me, mate. I'm uh, really enjoying this and looking forward to having a great chat with you and your subscribers. Yep, uh, it's going to be fun. I think if anyone hasn't discovered AC's channel yet, it's a fantastic fragrance review channel. There is a link in the description. And you cover a very wide range of different fragrances. I think our tastes in slightly refined gentlemanly styles overlap a little bit. Uh, but it's really a channel that uh, anyone out there who hasn't subscribed yet really would do well to discover. So today, we're going to find out a little bit about you as well as the five fragrances that, you, uh, that you've chosen for us. So the theme we go for here is the ones that you love most and, and that have ha had some meaning for you throughout your life or your fragrant journey not necessarily mm -hmm. your five top five smells in the collection right now. So no particular rules apart from that. And as we go through it, I'll try and find out a little bit about you as, uh, outside of the fragrance thing too. So just to fill viewers in, you are based in Swindon in the UK. Is that right? I am. I am. Good. Okay. And uh, everything, we're just coming out of our lockdown, hopefully. <laughs> we're probably going to shove back in it again next week by the sounds of things. But how are things down there for you? How's life in terms of, of uh, all of that? Has it affected you badly or are you, you you're okay? Well, personally, I'm all right. But I've seen, um, you know, in the news you read and stuff like that. But, you know, we are in the West Country. And West Country generally tends to be a very quiet place. Yeah, Southwest is very quiet. This is a commuter town. Um, I, I work in London or I work abroad, depending on my assignments. So, right. you know, it's not a, it wasn't a nice period. It was, I mean, it was difficult. Sometimes you came across some information. Everybody was locked down, right? Since Christmas, we have been indoors. So yeah. Yeah, it's been one of those things I've, been interacting with only my friends and family and generally things are okay but overall there's been a lot of suffering right and still going on i'm from india my roots are from india yeah. um, look at india i mean they are going through a tremendously challenging time one after the other i mean there's been yeah. cyclone there's been um uh, covid uh, there's also something called black fungus which is uh, really uh, rearing its head at the moment so it it is not a very good time and that's why i try to create content with the objective of just giving five minutes of happiness to someone you know and i yeah. guess you're the same the whole objective is to just give and i, I want to do exactly that today I, I want people to have a little bit of fun you know it sh they should get the value for the time they've invested in us that's yep. that's all it is. But yeah, it's 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 getting better in the southwest. Yep. It's, it wasn't that severe like north. Mm. But yeah, it's not been it's not been great now. No, it's been tough old times, but glad, mm. glad, to, glad to hear that you personally are doing okay. So, uh, just before I actually get into the list, my one question that I ask pretty much everyone who comes on is, because uh, I'm genuinely interested in this, because the answer varies so much. And that's sort of how and at what point did you become above averagely interested in fragrances? I think that's a great question. Before I answer the question, I just want to congratulate you on the release of your amazing fragrance. Yeah? Thank Let you. me, uh, Bon Viver is a fragrance which surprised me. And I want to be honest about it. Mm. I, I, was, I did an honest first impression. It surprised me because on, on paper, it sounded like a freshie. But yeah. what it did for me, the, the evolution, the transformation of the fragrance, really surprised me. It's a complex fragrance. This sort of perfumery is almost but dead. So congratulations to you. Congratulations to your team and your vision. You know, I really appreciate what you've done here. I really hope that this is a stunning success. I, I would like to see this to be a stunning success. So well done, mate. Yeah. 
Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yeah, you did very kindly do a first impression video re really soon after you got it, so people could find that on your channel. I didn't ask AC to mention Bob Viver at all. I'm, I'm a little embarrassed, but I, I guess I can live with it. Thank you so much. I, I really do appreciate that. And uh, yeah, yeah your, your words mean a lot to me because uh, I think I value your opinion very highly. Okay, so now you, you, but you, you haven't answered my question yet. So I will, what, what happened? I will Why are you into fragrances? See, the thing is, I, nobody in my family was into fragrances. My dad, my mom, uh, even my elder cousins, nobody was into fragrances. And neither was I. But somehow, I got the moniker of the Cologne guy in my university days. <clears throat> and it so happened that I was gifted a fragrance by my uncle, my, my eldest uncle. And it was my 17th or 18th birthday, first year university. And... Somehow I got the moniker of um, the Cologne guy because I used to wear that fragrance. And I'll show you what it was. And this is what probably started the journey for me. It was this. Denim EDT. So do you do you like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got I've got the aftershave. Yeah, it's excellent. I was yeah. I was gifted the aftershave, you see. But I this is an EDT. Is now. this your first pick then? This is my first pick because okay, this is perfect. where it started. This is Go. absolutely where it started. Okay. But uh, it didn't get me into uh, collecting. The collection happened much later, you see. But mm. I was interested in smell, uh, the sensation of smell. I've been gifted by the Almighty with a really sensitive nose. I can pick stuff. And my mom was uh, a very avid gun. She still is. And we used to have these beautiful jasmines in our garden, frangipanis. And these are the flowers that are very popular in India. So I spent my childhood and my adulthood smelling these beautiful flowers in different seasons. So I and always used to have these jasmine buds on my table when I used to study. And so my association with the sensation of smelling something goes right back into my childhood days because of my mom's garden. But collection or using a cologne every day started later on and there was it was never there in any way shape or form anywhere in our family not in me it's just not there it's just flowers fruits that's not there we have quite a few fruit, fruit trees in our house in india so those smells are there that i love smelling those and that's why i can pick different fragrances different scents but mm -hmm. perfumery or collection never happened it happened much later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe we'll find out a bit more how, about how, how that happened as we go sure. on. Um, but that sounds interesting. It's, it, it's, it's definitely true that I think you, you're very good at picking out details and notes within the fragrances, uh, mm. which is, is really, really good. And I've, uh, people often say to me, oh, do you have to have a lot of knowledge to, to do the reviews? And I, I'm actually, I would say I'm kind of the opposite. That I don't actually think I'm, I'm massively good at that at all. Uh, but you can still talk about how, what you like about the fragrance and, uh, you know, your experience of it and what, what kind of feeling it gives you and all that kind of stuff without being so technical. But I, I always do admire, I think I'd, I'd place you and Greggy Boy 76 in that category where you often really sort of notice the, the fragrant notes and, and you don't need to have them written down on a piece of paper to tell us what's in it. So I always look up to people who can do that. Now, you mentioned denim then great fragrance. For, I think it was released in the 70s. Can you just tell us a bit more about what you like about that one? I think it's, uh, well, when I was gifted this fragrance, I just loved it because that's the only fragrance I had. Yeah. Uh, I was buying stuff like aftershaves. I was a big time to sports. So I was a very sporty boy before I entered a serious uh, course in university, right? Being a sporty boy, uh, you would be taking showers at least twice or thrice a day. I, I didn't need any aftershaves or anything like that. Uh, in India, it's very hot anyways. So, so when I was to, given, you went to university in India as well, yes. Right, okay. So, when you, went, you, when you went, sorry, go on. Yeah, okay. so, uh, well, so you were in India when you went to university, and it was only after that that you, you came to the UK. Yes, that also was a, is a very interesting story. I can, we can go into that if you want. Keep, keep going, keep going, sorry. I just wanted to make sure that I, I subscribe to your time limit. So, uh, I mean, when you're in university, you can't, across different 
types of situations. And that's when I was gifted this. And it sort of coincided with uh, meeting people, different people, um, stuff like that. You know, I was a very studious boy. I entered a very, very serious course. It was taking about 15, 16 hours of my time a day. It was a very intense course. Yeah. So there was not much social life that I had. So my sports stopped. So there was no need for aftershaves. But my study and uh, whatever little interaction I had uh, probably was, denim was enough to uh, suffice that requirement. What I liked about denim, initially I didn't have, I was pretty neutral to it. But see, I like nature. And denim is basically a, a, a leather sheep. And it gave me that feeling of being close to nature. Even now when I smell it from the cap, in spite of being this one of my first memories of uh, fragrance, this is green. And then it has this aldehydic nature. It has a very nice earthy patchouli, very nice oak moss, leather. These are, now, if I find these notes in a fragrance, I'm automatically drawn to those scents. But th this fragrance, you know, it's costs of five a night. Yeah? Yeah. You could not get a better fragrance for five times. I'm telling you. Yeah. There is no depreciation in the quality, the way it smells, all, all, all right. I mean, some people might say this is old school, and def definitely it's old school. But I wore it first year university, you know. So it doesn't bother, bother me. I, I still would wear this. I, I still wear it. So yeah. this is the scent that started my love affair with sheepers. I'm a massive sheeper fan. But that would I would only come to realize that later on in my life. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, how did I end up in England? Well, I've, I did my computer science and mathematics. As I said, it was a very, very intense course. After, and I was doing it from a top university. After doing the course, you are given the option. Well, a lot of companies visit you, and that's known as campus selection. So I was given the option to uh, work in the US, India. I got selected for Merrill Lynch, which was then the world's biggest investment bank. So I got the option to work either in New York or in Shanghai, stroke Mumbai, and in the UK. So I chose Shanghai stroke uh, Mumbai. When I went to Shanghai, I realized nobody could understand me because they don't speak any English outside the office. So there was a massive language problem. So I said, okay, I'll work in Mumbai. I, when I was basically planning to work in Mumbai, my management decided that you should get exposure to different parts of the company. And it's a big firm. And then I was supposed to do UK. When I came to UK, I only came here for six months. And I realized that I absolutely love the people. They can understand me. I can understand them. I love the, the countryside. I was in London, but I was traveling and experiencing. So it just turned out that I really enjoyed the experience. And I decided to um, you know, go back to India. But they said, listen, you can settle down if you want to in the specific side of the business. I was in back end, so I was not an investment banker. I was basically a technician, as they said, back end is a lingo. Um, I was doing some geeky stuff and they said, we really would love your services if you wanted to stay on. And that's how it happened. I stayed on and uh, I've worked all over the world, but this is my home. <laughs> and it's, it's all started from there. It was not planned. I wasn't planning to leave India. It just happened that I ended up leaving India. <laughs> So, wow! Yeah. It's, you never. Many of the big events in life are not planned, and they just happen for uh, almost n n trivial reasons. But obviously, yeah, the, the the being able to speak the language is is pretty pretty huge. And uh, obviously, there's always been a pretty big uh, historical link between India and England. So, uh, yeah. well, we're glad we're glad you came and uh, glad you like it. I hope I can visit, visit India one one day. I've never been out out in that part of the world. But so I, I, I will make sure that changes, Stan. I'll right. absolutely guide you. I'll tell you one thing. You brought a point, which is a great point. That is, the, there's a historical link, but also, and this is coming from a person who spent 50-50, half his life in the UK. I, I spent 25 years in the UK. I spent 22 years in India. I'm 47. Right. I'll be 47 this Christmas. And what I've realized is, the way the culture, the, the dynamics of culture, there's the basic pillars of Indian culture and the UK or the English culture are same. You know, English people are very reasonable people. Uh, they're very amicable. There's a huge emphasis on politeness, um, warmth, 
you you find the same thing in Indian culture uh, in in people extremely reasonable people um they're very polite very warm very welcoming and you rub either of these two the wrong way you realize uh, to your own peril that you've done the wrong thing so this is part of the historical linkage there is this cultural uh, heritage common cultural heritage is yeah. based on general decency is very proud people um so i i find that i've experienced that myself so uh, it's it's very obvious to me and i think it's very obvious to a lot of people they're, they're very common there's, these are these two are very common people apart from the, many other things like food is different but there's the foundation of these two people are very common very very similar i'd say yeah i think there there is definitely a big big link between the two the between the two countries undoubtedly Okay, now, so that was a great first choice. I think you're not the first person. I think somebody else, I think it was Chris from Scentland, mentioned denim. Denim is a, a really, really great fragrance in one of the videos we did together. And I, yeah, I, I really, it's, it's really good stuff, actually, denim. For the money, it's, it's outstanding. It, it is. really is. This is yeah. great. I mean, I, uh, when it comes to, uh, I'm just tempted to spray it, mate, because I, was, I smelled it from the cap and I enjoyed it. When yeah. it comes to vintage fragrances, Chris has got some outstanding choices but um i'm glad to see that chris likes this yeah so let's it's an Itali apparently it's an italian brand i was uh, surprised to, to hear yeah i didn't think of that it that way but uh it yeah it's, it's really been going a long time yes it, it has a little bit of an old school vibe but absolutely yeah. no reason that anyone of any age couldn't wear it any time i think uh, yeah, I mean, today's 19-year-old uh, lads couldn't wear this because they're used to ambroxans and sweet fragrances. Yeah. But this is what gentlemen smells like, you know. Uh, it's just so good. Uh, damn, I'm mean, just, oh, beautiful scent. There's this nutty leather, mm. um, little bit of aldehyde, uh, you know, oak moss. Oh, I just, this fragrance is just, I have to review it. I haven't reviewed it. But, you know, oh. Sorry, mate. I just wanted to indulge myself. No, that's good. I like it when people actually bring this, the, the fragrance out and smell it on the thing. That's it's good. Okay, so that was a great place to start. What's fragrance number two, please? Number two, um, let's go with my first niche. So, you know, as I said, I was not into collecting fragrances. The only thing I collected was books. I'm a massive right. fan of books, and I was buying books left, right, and center. But so, sometime around 2000, you know, I just decided that I ought to look into fragrances. And the first fragrance I bought with my own money, proper, was Fahrenheit in 97, I think. And after that, I bought three more. There were Cool Water, I uh, can't remember the other one, and June. I've kept the bottle for sentimental reasons. I've lost the, all the other bottles. This is the original deal. And this came out in 1997. And this is from Enzo. And you can see a little bit of juice left. So that's my first fragrance purchase with my own hard cash. Now, after that, I mean, it took about a decade for me to get into niche because I used to visit uh, Selfridges on Oxford Street. And that was my real gig. I mean, I used to go there at least once a season, just try out new stuff. And once, in, back in 2009, 2010, maybe even later, I can't remember, but this is a really old bottle. I chanced upon a fragrance house called Amouage, and the lady told me that this is an Omani house, and they're very famous for incense. Right? And incense is something that in Indian culture is associated with prayers and, and that sort of thing, offerings and all that stuff. So it's a very common note. So for me, incense as a concept was like, why would I want to wear it? It was so very honest kind of a, Everybody from India would do this. You know, why would I want to wear or smell like Loban? Loban is the word used for incense. Mm. But when the ladies sprayed it on a piece of paper and told me that this was one of the most outstanding, I think it's about Ramda Hamani. If I've got her name wrong, I do apologize. I'll have to check again. But she told me that this was an artistic masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And before that, I had no idea about niche. This fragrance, right. right then and there, it was Christmas time. I can't remember which year. It, right then and there, changed me into a person who started seeking complex uh, scent signature and profile. And this fragrance, when you spray it, 
It is well traveled. It smells of the kind of incense you would smell in India. It smells of olibanum, beautiful, solid olibanum, as in resin. So that's yeah. what you get in Somalia. It smells of oud, leather. It's got castorium, I think. It's got uh, cumin, excuse me, um, which makes the fragrance that, it gives the fragrance that body armor, uh, body odor, I was going to say body armor, body odor smell. It's a, it's a yeah. magic in the bottle. Is it interlude? This is epic. Oh, okay. Can you show us the so, bottle? Yeah, sure. Sorry, I thought well, if you were building it. up to that. <laughs> ah, sorry, mate. Epic, this is epic. epic man. Yeah, I can't. I couldn't tell if it was dark blue or it's a green one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ah, epic man. Yeah, I, I've smelled that a while back, but it's been ages. Yeah. Please continue, buddy. If you really want to experience multi-layered perfumery like your own fragrance with all the expensive notes you can imagine: incense, mm. olibanum, myrrh. Oud, leather, sandalwood, yeah. they're all in here. Uh, cardamom, it's an absolute gem of a fragrance. It's a complete party. And this was what converted me into a lover of niche, complex, multi-layered fragrances. This was my first niche. And mm. to this date, I'm in complete love with this fragrance. I haven't reviewed it. I don't know why. We've got to review this one. Um, yeah. To this day, Every time I spray it, um, I'm just completely in awe of this fragrance. So this is what started me. I, I won't go on and on. Um, yeah. This is this is what started my niche journey. It's just wow. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So yeah. That's, yeah. I, mean, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Well, it's great. No, and it's uh, you, that was a pretty uh, exotic place to start because a lot of people maybe their first niche fragrance was Aventus or yeah, yeah. But you went straight in with uh, a real powerful exotic smell. Great. Okay, but the question for me now is, where would you go from there? So, uh, yeah, and I like I like Amouage because uh, I I kind of was very much a Creed fresh fragrance person for a long mm. time but i've got a couple of amouages now and i'm really starting to see that there's a lot of really intriguing stuff in their in their range and i, I want to add some more for sure now so okay so two i mean couldn't get a better contrast there denim to amouage epic man what's number uh, three what's number, number three, three please number three showed me uh, to me the power of recommending a good fragrance to a good friend you see one of my friends was um, very curious about my choices, fragrance choices. And he said, look, I'm getting married. Um, he was getting married in autumn, I believe, september -ish. He said, I'm getting married and I want to wear something special. Yeah. And I said, look, <clears throat> I thought to myself, what could be special and in budget? I didn't ask him for his budget. I just said, what could be something that he would be remembered by? Yeah, I was just thinking about him and looking at his personality, I said, you go with this. It's um, Gerlach Heritage EDP. So when he came back from his honeymoon, he was so much you know, overjoyed by the fact that he had not only worn an amazing fragrance to his wedding, he was in love with his fragrance. He came back and said to me that I have never experienced anything in my life in terms of scents which does this, you know, heritage. And I said, what did you like about it? He said, it smells different every time I wear it. If I wear it in the mornings, it smells different. He went to Mauritius and he came back and said, you know, I was walking by in the sandy beaches. I felt as if I'm, you know, in, in heaven. The smell, the sea, the sound, the smell of the sea. And he came back and said, I've never, ever experienced fragrance which is like this. And this told me, this fragrance is special for me because he's a very good friend of mine. This told me that if you're able to help somebody with a special scent for the very special day in their life, they'll always be thankful to you. They'll always remember you. And that's what happened. And here it is. You know, I don't know whether you've smelled the EDP, have you? Yep. Yeah, I've, I've smelled both versions. Strangely, yeah. I don't know why I don't have heritage in my collection yet, because it's very me. But I, I have smelled it, and I agree that it's great. It is, it is very you. And I just wanted to tell you, why did I go for this? This is a shipper. And I like the smell of nature. So, I mean, this is, what a scent this is, fella. I mean, this has got lavender. It's got aldehydes, juniper berries, 
the sandalwood at the base. There's tons of spices in the middle. Coriander, I believe. Pink pepper. Who uses pink pepper as a heart note? You know? So amber, again, warm. Mm. Um, this fragrance is absolutely magical. This fragrance, you know, you don't spend much money for this. You spray this or if you have the personality and the openness, uh, you're completely bowled over by the scent. It's just a, a magna carta of a fragrance. Jean-Paul Guerlain created it as an homage to uh, all the previous um, Guerlain greats. And he mm. created it in 1992. I don't get much similarity to the previous greats, but what a fragrance this is. I mean, this is phenomenal scent. Mm. Oh, just amazing fragrance. So I recommended it. That is when I realized that I could do this to tons of other people and just make their life a little bit happier. And the joy I got out of his words when he came back from his wedding was phenomenal. I couldn't measure it. So I said, you know, let me, if somebody comes and asks me, I'll definitely make an attempt to understand his personality and then recommend something to him. So this started a little habit in me uh, of helping somebody out with a nice fragrance. That's all it is. And that's why it's so special. Ah. Heritage. Brilliant. Uh, and would you say the uh, Eau de Parfum version could be the one to go for if we have a choice of the two? Of the two, um, I would say either. Okay. Eau de Parfum is a, a very um, thick fragrance. So mm. if you don't mind uh, wearing something bombastic, Eau de yep. Parfum. So special occasions. Eau de yep. Toilette is a little bit more wearable in day-to-day. -day. So office or... Yep. Places where you haven't visited before, or some meeting someone you haven't met before, and earn uh, sign of caution and wear the audit one. So it depends on the occasion where you want. Audit perform is very, um, excuse me, it's very full on. Okay. Well, I need to get one or the other, so I'll have a think about okay. that. And that's interesting then. So was that, uh, the, the, when you suggested this to your friend, was that before you'd started doing the YouTube channel? Oh. Long time ago, mate. Right. So YouTube this is stuff. perhaps, but it's giving you the idea that you would like to share the hobby and help other people to discover great fragrances. Absolutely. I think that my work colleagues, my work colleagues were the ones who were responsible for my channel. See, I was a very shy kind of a guy, like any technical person. I'm more immersed in books and, and creating software and stuff like mm. that. I, I was very afraid of speaking to the camera. Yeah. So it was only when my mates at work said, look, you've helped so many guys here. People just absolutely love you for the kind of fragrance choices you give to them. Why don't you do something for public in general? And I was like, oh, I could do it. He said, look, if you don't like it, you just leave the video, right? Yeah. So I said, all right, let me give it a try. And my first video, I did it on a webcam. It, it wasn't a series, it was just an experiment. I yeah. just did it on a webcam and I... I did it for Valentine's Day. Uh, I think it still got 160 views. It didn't get many views. But yeah. what it did for me was it killed off my shyness, my yeah. uh, apprehension that I couldn't speak to a camera. It yeah. also, and because I'm sort of a very, I'm a very brave kind of person. I don't care how many views I get. If I want to do mm. something, I'll go and do it. Yeah. So it gave me that, it, um, that momentum there. Okay, I want to do this. People are liking it. My work colleagues are liking it. If nobody watches, my friends will watch. And yeah. uh, that's how it started. So that's the journey. That's the beginning of the journey. It, it was brilliant. just one of my workmates. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, people often do get really into it when they find out that you're in fragrances. And, you know, it's very easy to make other people who've never really had more than one fragrance on the shelf. And once they start talking to you about it, before you know it, They've got 10 fragrances and they've suddenly started watching YouTube and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's a very infectious little hobby, isn't it? It is. One That's thing I'd like to tell people is don't go. I've seen people go crazy numbers very fast, like 150 in three months. Yeah. And that's definitely that's going to put some, put some pressure on your finances, right? Yeah. I, I really would like to tell people not to do that. I know it's very addicting. I know it's uh, very difficult to stop. But mm. getting into debt for any hobby is not the best thing to do. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I totally agree with you about that. Yeah, do do try and be be sensible out there, folks. It's uh, it's a great hobby, but it's 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 never urgent to have any new fragrance. And you know, if you've got one or two, you're fine. And uh, yeah, maybe get samples of stuff before you rush out and buy the expensive ones. And if you've got a desperate itch to scratch, try and do it with a twenty pound fragrance, not a three hundred pound one or what yeah half the time the feeling's just the same to open the box so yeah definitely be careful guys yeah i couldn't agree more and i've yeah. seen people do that and they let leave comments on my channel and you've seen how much my subscribers are um in tune with me they are very uh, we engage a lot yeah and sometimes i feel like telling them that please don't do that but you know it would be invading into some sort of a personal space but i drop a slight hint i also made a video on this matter as to how to not get into debt because mm. getting into debt because of a hobby is not the brightest thing you can do because ultimately you'll have to pay the debt off mm. uh, and suddenly something that's supposed to give you joy is giving you sorrow you know exactly. it's sleepless nights yeah why would you want to do that i grew very gradually that i came from 10 to 20 in about 5 years from right. 20 to 100 very rapidly and from 100 to 150 very rapidly then yeah. i scaled down i realized yeah. that uh, there's there's no space uh, in the house to store 150 fragrances so yeah i'm going to on 450 how much are you on i think i'm very similar sort of i haven't counted for ages but it must be like 400 4 to 500 ish or something but yeah. people must remember that you know, we have a youtube channel <laughs> so we're not what you sh- if if you don't have that number that's not what you need to aim for to have a good collection and we it's, it it occupies a very big role in our lives in a different way but yeah. that you know that this is abnormal <laughs> and uh, yeah i'm sure both of us i've i've never done it to the point where i'm getting in debt and no. um you know i don't have other massively expensive hobbies or you know yeah. exp- fancy cars or i'm not w- whining and dining uh, all week so you know it's it's still within my means and yeah please guys uh, d- don't go mad yeah Couldn't as i say don't try this at home folks right okay so well, three i think no how many have we done now three now um, three what number four please number four number four is a fragrance which taught me and uh, that you know your fans your sorry your subscribers when they get a joy out of a fragrance it is worth more than your own personal interest see how i grew my channel was from reviewing what i like and i respect yeah. to reviewing to working out what would work for people mass yeah. majority uh, i looked at google analytics and people who visit my channel are between the age group of 25 and 45 So right. I really look at this is my audience. Now, this fragrance that I'm going to show you next basically was as a result of my understanding, change in my perception that what I like and review and I still do that, those are my majority of my uh, reviews, mm. maybe slightly different than what people like or will get more success with. Yeah. So, I reviewed it and the reception was amazing. Chanel Alioron Sport Eau Extreme. Excuse me. This fragrance is not something that I would review. I love it, but I reviewed it because I know that this was going to help more and more people. And this is a very simple fragrance. It's aquatic woody. Yeah. It contrasts orange with um tonka and um aquatic notes. It is one of those fragrances which is bound to get you noticed. and if you're a youngster and you live in a hot country you will spray this on on your sheets a t-shirt or a shirt and you go out and if you're a amicable sort of a person approachable person i'm pretty sure people will give you at least a nod of appreciation that you when you made an effort and it, you smell amazing now this when i did this review it got more views than any of my single reviews right and i like to do single single reviews i don't like to do too many lists i think most yeah. of the lists uh meaningless it's just people being greedy trying to get more views and i don't like it it's nonsense so i do full reviews yeah mm. and this is probably my most watched full review maybe right. at least in the top 3 so i realized i may not uh, think this as worthy i've had this uh, many years in my collection multiple bottles 
but I never thought this was worthy of my review because it's so mm. simple. Yeah. But then I changed. It, this thing changed me, and I changed because I saw that this benefited my subscribers. So this is basically me understanding my relationship with my subscribers. That is something that has helped my subscribers. Hence, I have to change my mindset towards how I look at fragrances. They don't always have to be complex. They don't always have to be niche or indie. They can be something as simple as Allure On Sport or Extreme. And that's when I started doing many budget fragrances, you know, the Rosasis. I was still doing it before I did this, but the success of mm. this review changed my mindset towards just reviewing what I like to working out what my audience would like and what yeah. would get them noticed and complimented and doing those reviews as well. So this was a learning curve. This was a major milestone in the learning right. curve. See what I mean? So that's why this is um, dear to my heart. I really like this fragrance, but now I like it even more. That makes sense. Yeah, it's an interesting fragrance, that one, isn't it? It's a, a kind of a flanker to a flanker because there was a, the original Allure on Sport and then there was this. And, uh, yeah, I definitely, a lot of people, including the, the great Jeremy Fragrance himself, have often said that it's, it's a great compliment getter and, you know, really... Although, yeah, I, I've always smelled it and perhaps like you, it's, it's, I've been nonplussed a little bit when I've just smelled it in the store. And for that reason, I've never bought it. But, again, as you say, it's, it's all about the result that it actually brings when you wear it out in the world. And you, you, you wanted to share that with your viewers. And like you, I got to the point where I sometimes start to actually maybe buy fragrances just because I think that my viewers actually would be really interested to hear about them. Whereas I'd, perhaps if I just was buying for my own wearing, that one wouldn't be that exciting for me. But so I do, yeah, I, I get your point that you do have to think about the, the viewer's experience as well as what you, I mean, we all want to do what we're passionate about and you, yes. you're very much someone who does that without just desperately chasing views, which I, I do respect a lot. Uh, but it is, of course, important to consider what, what people will benefit from. So, yeah, yeah like you, sometimes I'll put, I, I bought a few uh, Armaf fragrances and that kind of thing that maybe yeah. I probably wouldn't have been in a hurry to get for my own pleasure. But I thought, well, people, okay, yes, I thought perhaps the video might get quite a few views too, but I thought people will actually benefit from, from hearing about this. And uh, so, yeah, that is that is part of what we do, isn't it? So, yeah, great to hear how your, your journey developed there. And, uh, yeah, I was, I was actually aware of Allure Homme Sport for about 10 years. It was my signature scent. And uh, I got people really liked that. I mean, it was yes. the, the ladies love it. So uh, sometimes, sometimes I think this whole hobby, you know, I, I I probably would have got more compliments if I just stuck with that and never got into this <laughs> this thing. But hey, there you go. Uh, well, four great ones. So we're on to number five. What's it going to be? Uh -huh. So last one is a fragrance, basically, which gives me immense satisfaction. If I had to pick just one fragrance. From my entire collection, I was really pushed hard that your chopper leaves in five seconds, get your one fragrance, get on it, and you're out, Bond. I love it. <laughs> this is Aqua di Palma Colonia Essenza. Uh, sorry, Intensa. Now, this fragrance, I know you love Essenza. This is Intensa, mate. This fragrance gives me serious amounts of joy. It, this, if my personality was to be transformed into one fragrance, it'd be this. Yeah. It is absolutely beautiful in any season. Every yeah. time I spray this, I'm not wearing anything, then I think I'll spray it on myself. Let's okay. see. Wow, buddy. This fragrance is an absolute joy, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely in heaven. This fragrance, ah, oh, do you know what I do when yeah. I go for really important meetings where I know my client is exceptionally important to me? I spray this. This is one of my luckiest fragrances. I'm not a superstitious person, mm -hmm. but when I'm faced with a situation when I want to throw everything at impressing somebody who's very important to me, especially in the business scenario, I wear this. Yeah. Oh. This is citrus aromatic with leather, with um, a flower which I accidentally discovered. It's called Amiris. I was in an arboretum not far from here, and 
it's basically a forest. And I was walking through the forest and about 10 yards from this tree, I started smelling absolutely divine smell. It smelled like clean sheets mixed with neroli, real orange blossom. And I was smelling this and walking in the forest. It was a sunny day, warm day. And I suddenly see this tree in the middle. It wasn't, it was a tree. It was absolutely loaded with flowers, white flowers. And that was my first encounter with the Amiris flower. Right. Mate, if you ever get a chance yeah. in early spring to smell Amiris, yeah. it, will, it will just take you to heaven. This has got this beautiful Amiris. There's oh, a famous right. by, yeah, there's a famous by Maison Francis Kubitschow called Amiris X Straight. Mighty oh, expensive. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're in Selfridges or Harrods, just go and see if you can get a spray of it and try it. It's just, and this thing is the best implementation of Amiris. Yeah. So, man, this is my fragrance. If I ever had one fragrance to carry and mm. escape in a chopper, <laughs> I'll take this. <laughs> right. Well, oh, some so, people are running into a burning house to save one, but you're 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 escaping in a in a helicopter. <laughs> I like that. Um, <laughs> it's, so, I've got Intensor too, and it, I came round to it after a while, and it really yeah. is an absolutely superb scent. Wow. Uh, not probably of all the Aqua de Parma colonias, it's the one that's least like just being a citrus cologne type fragrance yes. as you say it's got the leather and quite a bit of depth so it really an all-season fragrance and i really yeah i i think and and lasts well and projects nicely very appropriate wow. for any kind of situation and i i do now uh, have to say that is a a top choice from aqua de palma for anyone if, if you want to just go and try <sighs> their range i think that could be one of the ones that i would i would put high in my list yeah love love the house of aqua department myself yeah yes i think that's how you found my channel i still remember when i reviewed this uh, and i still if you go to my review of this one it's a very early review okay. you commented on that review uh, and that right. day was very special for me i said if <laughs> mr smelly is commenting on my review i must be doing something right <laughs> it completely made my day i think you oh. commented the very next day so I really appreciated that little encouragement you gave me. I must have been wow. like 500 subs then. So wow. you you made a big difference to how I felt about my work. Thank you, mate. Uh, well, I can't, I, I'm very surprised and touched to hear that. That's really nice. Okay, well, that was a lovely final choice. And thank you so much for a great, great selection. You've really, as I, I suspected you might, you've given us some really varied and excellent choices and lovely brilliant descriptions just the last thing then um yes. we're both doing the same thing making fragrance reviews on youtube how do you think about the, the what do you think about the way the youtube fragrance scene is now do you watch a lot of other videos where do you think things are going to go next uh, i mean it, it's great that you've got a channel that's doing well but you tend to do a lot of single fragrance reviews, which mm. traditionally get a little bit less views than, than the lists and things. So you're still doing well, but being true to yourself. Uh, where do you, what do you think of the whole YouTube fragrance scene now? Do you watch other videos? I watch very few people. There are two reasons for that. Number one, uh, quality content. Okay. When I used to watch, I started watching in 2008, 2009, right? At that time, I used to follow people like Katie Patrick, Bottom Note, um, who else? My Makers. The content produced by these people back in 2009, 2010, it was vastly different to what is being produced now. Hmm. So without being a, a bit of a snob, I just don't get the satisfaction that if I go to a chat, there's another chap I forgot, Krista, before he teamed up um, uh, with that, obnoxious guy who you behaved do. in a very strange way yeah, yeah. I, i'm not i'm not a big fan of that sort of behavior but anyways it's yeah. each <laughs> each one to their own you know yeah that's all right but crystal was one guy i would go to his channel and watch it like three binge watches you know three mm. times when he was in thailand he used to do absolutely stunning reviews back back in the day yeah so when you watch that kind of quality stuff, and then it comes to this, you know, it's all about, oh, this fragrance has vetiver, geranium, uh, leather, bites, 
and you will get laid. So you think to yourself, I've got better things to do with my time, eh? Sorry, but that's the whole reason I've stopped watching. The other thing is time, you see. Uh, yeah. I work about 60 to 70 hours a week, every wow. week. Yeah. Rain, sleet, or shine. It's our industry. It's just, you wow. can't escape. So that's why my reviews come out in the late night. Mm. When I, my reviews come out, it's like 10, 30, 11. Yeah. That's when I finish my day, I've eaten, and I plan what I'm going to do, I iron my shirt the next day, and then I review. My day closes, then I review, then I release. So there's hardly any time. Yeah. If I ever felt like watching, I go to your channel, and I watch um, Juicer Rose. She's, she's a great reviewer. I enjoy yeah. her work. Um, yeah. I you've like done a collab her. with her, haven't you? Yeah, she's a really, really charming lady. I really have a lot of time for her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, she's doing some good work. Mm. Uh, who else do I watch? I still watch my makers because, you know, I really felt sad when he passed away because he's one of my really old reviewers that I've watched since yeah. 10 years. So yeah. I still watch his videos. Um, yeah. I used to watch Rad Lessons before he became commercially minded. Mm. Um, and that's the main reason I'm put off by watching these commercially free bottle reviews because they are just not reviews. They're just like, oh, yeah, it's got better guys, it's got Bergamore. Uh, mm. Lovely. You'll get a lot of compliments. I mean, come on, tell me how I will feel when I wear this. Yeah. I mean, you saw how I did your um, review yesterday. It's not about mm. it's got Bergamore, it's got <laughs> gin. It's about how you will feel. What yeah. is this going to do to you? Why should you consider even testing it? You know? So that's what I like to see. So I don't, I don't care much now. And they're all lists, right? Ten fragrances you should wear yeah. when you're going to going to the loo or something like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, how low can you go? So it's one of those things that has lost it. I've lost interest in watching 10 top 10 lists. I, I do top 10 lists, but they are meaningful lists. There's something behind it. And to yeah. say, okay, uh, you might want to watch this because there's some stuff in here. I'm sorry, I'm being critical, but the standards have gone low. And I want to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's it's evolved and changed and become a little bit more professionalized, but it, it's sort of more like an industry for some people now. So, yeah, definitely uh, I can agree with some of your points there, 100%. Interesting to hear your take on it, but, uh, you know, as ever, you were, I don't think you said anything too outrageous to offend anyone there. I think you made some you know, fair points. Um, it's... It, it's a very rich heritage that we have inherited. You know, this Fratcom, we are just uh, custodians of it. It was created by some of the guys who are not even doing those reviews anymore. But yeah. taking something which is extremely rich and vibrant and just dimming it down to a mere, you know, traffic mechanism. You know, I, I do top tens because I'll get traffic is very selfish. You're not enriching it further, you're creating something which is like, oh, I'm just, I'm just going to add more traffic to my, to my uh, channel and it's going to get me some revenues. Just give some value to your customers. Come on, not yeah. customers, subscribers. So, yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Got to be honest. You know, some yeah. things you have to be honest. And there you go. I appreciate it. No, that's really good. I, I, it's very, you made some very valid points. But guys, don't forget to check out my top 10 summer list, which will be uploaded tomorrow. Uh, no, I'm just I joking. I'm, I'm joking. I'm kidding. Uh, no, but yeah, it's a very valid group of points that you've made there, I think. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, interesting to hear your take. And great, yeah, great to think back to some of those great reviewers that, uh, although they were more low tech, you know, there were no bells and whistles in the video. Sometimes what they actually said was uh, a little bit more engrossing than some of, of what's out there now. I do, I do tend to agree. AC, it has been a true pleasure and an honour, and a gen I genuinely mean that, to have you on the channel, and especially as I, I think you're a very busy person, so giving me some time in your weekend when you should be just uh, chilling out is really appreciated. Thank you so much for joining me on the, the show today. Everybody do check out the channel if you haven't already. There's a link in the description for AC's channel, and uh, I hope I'll see you again very soon. Thank you for having me, Dan. Thank you for being so kind and so, such a brilliant host. I know we've overrun, but I'm hoping that your subscribers and my subscribers will have a good time watching this. Honest stuff, right straight from the heart. I think we both are the same. 
And I'm pretty sure they'll be speaking again and doing more collabs. So it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. 100%. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for watching. And everybody out there, remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. Bye-bye. Take care.